Medication calculations can seem really overwhelming for a lot of nursing students. And one of the most daunting aspects of a pediatric clinical is typically the amount of medication calculations you'll need to do. We do so many calculations in peds clinicals because almost all of the doses are weight-based doses, which means that before you give any medication, or at least most medications, you will have needed to perform the weight-based medication calculation for that medication to ensure that you're giving the correct or the safe dose. I think that one of the reasons that students find this overwhelming is because they don't really understand why they're calculating what they're calculating. In this video, I want to eliminate some of that confusion by giving you two rules to keep you on the right track as you're working through these types of problems. And I also wanna share some of my tips for you to help you know how to approach weight-based medication calculation problems. To make sure that you're comfortable with using some of these concepts, we will do an example together at the end where we will bring everything together. And of course, if you wanna skip around, I have provided timestamps for you in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Anna and I'm a critical care registered nurse. I've also been a pediatrics nursing instructor, so I have quite a bit of experience working out medication calculation problems. The first two rules that I'll give you will steer you right the vast majority of the time. The first rule is that all of your units must be able to cancel. If you set up all of your conversion factors and you're not able to cancel out as you move throughout the problem, you know that your answer will be incorrect. The second rule is to look at your answer to see if it makes logical sense. I am not making this up when I tell you that students have submitted answers to me saying that they want to give their patient two liters of morphine or run IV fluids at 55,000 mils an hour. If they would have paused and looked at their final answer to see if it makes sense, they would have quickly realized that there's no way we would give a patient this much medication and they would have gone back to recheck their work. Now that we have those two simple rules covered, let's go on to some rounding reminders. And rounding is important because depending on your instructor or your school, if you aren't rounding appropriately, your entire answer may be incorrect. As a general rule, weights should be rounded to the nearest tenth. This means that you'll report one number to the right of the decimal point. If your answer is greater than one, you will also report your answer in tenths, meaning you'll list one number also to the right of the decimal point. And if your answer is less than one, you will report your answer to the hundredths, which means that you will list two numbers to the right of the decimal point. And this makes sense. The smaller amount we have, the more specific we need to be. As we talk about rounding and reporting the correct amount of numbers in your final answer, it's also incredibly important that you include the units. Don't include an arbitrary number. A number by itself doesn't mean anything and more than likely your instructor will count that answer as incorrect. So after you've checked to make sure that you've reported the correct amount of numbers in your final answer, always make sure that you have the units there too so we know what this number is referring to. Let's move into some final tips and these are really, really helpful if you're not sure where to start based on the information that the question has given you. If your question is asking you to report the dose, you will need to know what the weight-based dosing range is for that medication. This information is typically found in the orders itself or in a reference manual. A question asking you to report the volume is really asking you what the volumetric amount is of the dose. To find the volume, we need to know what the concentration of the medication is. This is typically found on the medication itself, either directly on the vial or on the packaging that the medication comes in. Finally, if a question is asking you what the hourly rate is of a medication that's given only over a certain amount of time, you will need to know both the dose and the volumetric amount of that dose, or the volume of the dose. Let's bring a few of these ideas together by working through an example problem. We can see here that we are being asked to find both the dose and the volume of the dose. And remember, the volume is the volumetric amount that we will actually administer to the patient. So if we think back to some of the tips we talked about, we're reminded that in order to find the dose, we need to know what the weight-based dosing range is for that medication. 
we can see in our problem that the provider has given us that information already. The provider has ordered 15 milligrams of acetaminophen per kilogram of patient weight. Immediately, we should realize that our patient's weight was given in pounds while this dose was given in kilograms. And if we think back to the very first rule that we talked about, um, we need to make sure that our units are able to cancel out. So before we even go into working this problem out and figuring out what the dose is in milligrams per kilogram, we need to convert our weight from pounds to kilograms. Let's set up a quick conversion. We know that our patient is 45 pounds, and we also know that in one kilogram, there are 2.2 pounds. We can make sure that our units are able to cancel, which they do, and we see that our patient's weight in kilograms is 20.45 kilograms. If we think back to our rounding rule, we know that because this is a weight, we report this number to the tenths. So our final weight that we'll use in this problem is 20.5 kilograms. Now that our units match, our weight is in kilograms and our dosing is also in kilograms, we're able to calculate out the dose of this medication. So we'll start with our patient's weight, 20.5 kilograms, and we'll multiply that by the dosing ordered for this dose of acetaminophen, which is 15 milligrams per kilogram. We'll think back to our very first rule that we talked about again and see that our units are able to cancel and we'll multiply through and see that our answer is 307.5 milligrams for the dose. As we look at our final answer, we'll think back to our rounding rules and we know that if an answer is greater than one, we report our final answer to the tenths. We can see that this answer is already reported as such. We've included our units. So this is the final answer for the dose of medication for this patient. Now the dose is necessary information, but the dose in and of itself doesn't give us any information as to what the actual volume is that the patient will receive. In this case, how much acetaminophen we will need to draw up and give to this patient. If we think back again to some of the tips we talked about, we know that if we want to find the volumetric amount of a dose, we will need to know what the concentration of that medication is. If we look on the label of this acetaminophen, we'll see that there are 160 milligrams of medication in five milliliters of that medication. This is the concentration. Now that we know the concentration, we will need to use this information in conjunction with our weight-based dose that we just calculated to see what the final volume of medication is for this patient. So we'll start with the dose that we just calculated, the 307.5 milligrams, and we'll multiply that by five milliliters over 160 milligrams. We see that our units cancel nicely, we'll multiply through, and we'll see that our final answer is 9.61 milliliters of acetaminophen for this patient. Thinking back again to our rounding rules, we know that this answer is greater than one, so we will still report this answer to the tenths. This 9.61 will be rounded to 9.6 milliliters of acetaminophen. The final thing we'll do before putting our box around our official final answer is to think back to step two and ask ourselves, does this answer make logical sense? If we think back to who this medication is for, which is a seven-year-old child, and we can visualize the amount of volume there, right at or a little over nine mils, we can logically piece together that this seems like it'd be an appropriate amount of medication for this patient. If you found some of these tips and tricks helpful, please give this video a like and be sure to put in the comments below if you'd like me to do more videos like this where I work through medication calculation problems. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your medication calculations.